So today, I want to remind you guys to contend for the faith. You must contend for the faith. Many people contend for different reasons, but we must only contend for the faith. Or that's the most important thing to contend for. Some people contend for whether they must do, like, keep these laws or do these things or eat these foods. You can do that if you want to. But the only thing you contend for, for is to contend for the faith. You can see the contenders fighting for the title. But praise the Lord, we already have the victory in Christ. Let's show them another picture. That's the same. The Bible uses the word earnestly. Earnestly means seriously. And like a boxer, what does a boxer do? He seriously trains and learns to do his trade perfectly, punch perfectly, get full of energy and strength. So we need to seriously train and know what the faith says. And then we need to contend earnestly for the faith. Contend earnestly for the faith. Like Rocky Balboa. Eh? Training and saying no pain until he takes out that big guy. So the same way we need to train and contend earnestly for the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So many people say that unity needs to be protected above all else in the church. That is true to a sense, but the Bible says we are united in spirit. But then Jude comes and says, that we need to fight. And he uses the word fight. Contend earnestly for the faith. And many people criticize people like Martin Luther. Because what happened? What, 500 years ago, this last Thursday, October 31st, what happened on October 31st? It was Reformation Day. And Reformation Day is really important because it reminds us to contend earnestly, seriously for the faith. And what did Martin Luther do? He wrote 95 things and he put it on the, on the church door and he said these things are not correct. These things aren't in, in correct alignment with what the Word of God says. And it can be summarized in the five solas. So sola, scriptura, scripture only. Sola, Christus, Christ alone. Hey? Sola, fide, faith alone. Yeah, it's not good, Sola gracia, grace alone, and soli dio gloria, to God be the glory alone. And let's take a look at what Jude says. Jude says in Jude 1 verse 3, and he's reminding us to be a top fighting contender. Say, I'm a top fighting contender. Because we are contending earnestly for the faith. And he starts off by saying, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. So you're already, already, already you can see common salvation. It means that no one can boast that they earned their salvation. Everyone gets the same salvation. So that's why surely do glory of God gets all the glory. Because worthy is the Lamb, not worthy is you or me. Like when you get to heaven, ah, I earned it. It was my own salvation because I kept the law. Therefore, I get some glory. No, God gets all the glory because He is the one who saved you. It's a common salvation or a mutually shared salvation. And then it says the faith. So this is sola fide, sola gracia. It's the the faith, it's by faith alone, by grace alone. The faith is the gospel. And it's by grace and faith alone. Hallelujah. And then it says, which was once and for all delivered to the saints. So sola scriptura. The scriptures have been once and for all delivered to us. It can't be changed. So when the Pope or someone comes and says, no, 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 uh, we're adding this or changing that. You say, no, sola scriptura, once and for all. Once and for all, the Bible is once and for all delivered to us as it is. We're not adding or changing to it. Hallelujah. And then verse 4 says, For certain men 
have crept in unnoticed. And that's actually the devil, Satan couldn't defeat the church. So how did he decide to defeat the church? By joining the church. <laughs> so that's what he says. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, and godly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's that? Sola Christus. Solus Christus. Christ alone. Hallelujah. But I want to read to you from the RIV. So that's the Rena Interpretive Version. Version. It says, Beloved, I call you that because it's the only word I know to express how deeply I love and cherish you. Wow. I fully intended to write to you about our mutually shared salvation. And I was really eager to write about this exciting subject, ready to engage all my abilities to dive deep into all the benefits that our salvation entails. So that's actually what I was going to do. I was going to preach on something completely different. But then God remind, told me, no, talk about the faith. And that's what Jude was going to do. He was going to talk about the benefits of salvation. But then God he found a, this report about how people are departing or changing the faith into something else. And what, but firstly, what is the benefits of salvation? Let's quickly summarize it. So salvation is what word? Soteria. And soteria has seven benefits. So the first one obviously is salvation, forgiven and saved to go to heaven. But then there's present deliverance, healing, health, preservation or rejuvenation, safety and protection, prosperity, provision, and general welfare and wholeness. So Jude was going to talk about this, but then what's even more important is the faith. Because without the faith, you can't inherit these things. Then he says, but I was about to get but as I was about to get started, I found myself gripped with a sense of urgency and a deeply felt need to address another subject that came to my attention. I felt someone needed to come alongside the troops, to urge them, to bold their, to hold their head up high, throw their shoulders back. And if necessary, look the enemy eyeball to eyeball and to earnestly contend for the faith because it is under assault. God entrusted the faith to us once and for all and expects us to guard it and maintain its integrity in the same form it was delivered to us. God has given us the responsibility to impart it to others in the same form it was given to us. So contend earnestly for the faith. What does it mean to contend? To strive, to fight, to battle, to fight vigorously. That's what it means to contend, to fight vigorously like these boxes. These boxes go into that fight, to this match, to win to defeat their opponent, to knock them out as soon as possible. They don't go in to shake his hand and be friends. They go in to, to win. And then the same, this word is not just content to fight vigorously, but earnestly content. Earnestly means what? With sincere and intense conviction. Seriously. So it's a serious, vigorous fight. And why are we fighting? Because when dealing with error... With dealing with error when it comes to the faith, we need to be brave, but in love, correct people and correct things in, when people say stuff that is against the faith. You need to fight for the faith. So when it comes to other stuff, like I don't even want to name things because some people might say, oh no, that's really important. Oh no, that's really, oh, the word of God in, in its entirety is very important. But the most important thing that you need to fight for is the faith. So let's take a look at Philippians 1 verse 27. So we are fighting for the faith. And when we, so many people say, oh, we don't have to fight. But there is a time to fight. And the time to fight is to fight for the faith. Now Philippians 1 verse 27 says, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven 
conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. So what is the faith? The good news. The faith is the good news. The Young's literal translation says, striving together for the faith of the good news. The faith of the good news. Now, why is this important? Actually, the verse that God gave to me first was Galatians 2 verse 20. And it's so important because many people try to live through, like let's say, for health. They eat healthy, they exercise, they, they sleep well, try to sleep well for money, they try to invest or save or do all these things. All those things are fine. But when it comes to life, a believer lives through the faith. In the faith I live. In the faith I live. That's how we live. In the faith. So it starts off by saying in verse 19, For I, through the law, did die. But to God, that to God I may live. The young, a new living translation says, For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements, so that I might live for God. Verse 20 says, With Christ I have been crucified, and live no more do I, and Christ does live in me. And that which I now live in the flesh, that is in this mortal physical body. So how are we going to live in this mortal phys physical body? How do we live? Then it says, In the faith I live. And the faith, like we just said, is the gospel. So in the gospel I live. But what is the gospel? We'll be discussing that. But in the faith I live. And this faith does not come from you. It's the faith of the Son of God. It's the faith of the Son of God who did love me and did give Himself for me. Verse 21, I do not make void the grace of God, for if righteousness be through law, then Christ died in vain. So let's take a look at Acts 14, verse 22. Because the faith strengthens us. And it says, confirming the souls of the disciples. Or you can say, strengthen the believers. How are the believers strengthened? How are the believers established? How are the believers encouraged? Then it says, exhorting to remain in the faith. So you are strengthened, you are confirmed, you are established in the faith. Encouraged. He encouraged them to continue in the faith. And that through many troubles, many tribulations, persecutions, it behooves us to enter into the reign of God. So I like the Young's literal translation because many translations will say something different here. But that word behooves means it's the best. Eh? So when you are persecuted, when you are in troubles or tribulations, the best thing is to enter into the kingdom of God. Eh? The best thing is, because some translations will say, no, persecutions is how you will enter into the kingdom of God. So it's, you can think about that. I would say the motive is you enter into the kingdom of God because it's the best. It behooves us. It's the best. It's necessary to enter into the kingdom of God. And what's the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So what is the faith that we must fight for? What is the faith that we must live in and remain in? It is the good news. And what is the good news? Let's take a look at Acts 3 verse 16. And it says, and this is where that crippled man is healed. And then Peter says, the faith of Jesus' name. The faith of Jesus' name. This man, when it says this one, whom you see and have known. So this crippled man who you know, you, you, from before you know he is crippled. Jesus' name made strong. So Jesus' name healed this man. So notice also Paul doesn't say it's his faith, like he is his power or whatever that healed this man. No, it's the name of Jesus that healed this man. So that's the thing, and we're going to discuss that. You must put your faith 
in Jesus' name. You must put your faith in the faith. You must put, you, your believing must be in the faith. You guys, the believing must be in the gospel. So when someone is sick, you mustn't say, oh, do I have enough faith or believing to get this person here or there's lack or poverty? Oh, do I have enough believing or faith to get provision or supply here? No, your believing mustn't be dispersed across all these things. Your believing must be on the faith, in the faith. Then, God does the healing. God does the provision. When you are focused and your belief is on the faith, your belief is on the faith of His name. Then it says, even the faith that is through Jesus did give to this man this perfect healing, soundness. And everyone could see it. But it's the faith that is through Him. Romans 3 verse 22 says, And the righteousness of God is through the faith of Jesus Christ to all and upon all those believing. For there is no difference. So another way to explain it is the faith is a noun. Is a noun. Believing is a verb. So it's something you do. So you, your believing must be in the faith. Your believing must be in the faith. So your believing mustn't be in what you can do. Hey? Your believing mustn't be in yourself or how much you are believing. So my believing is I believe a lot. Hey? Your believing mustn't be in your believing or your, your, your whatever you can do. Your believing is in the faith. You guys following? Now, believing is obviously a verb, but what are we believing in? Two things. We are believing in the faith of Jesus Christ and we're believing in His blood. Believing in the faith of Jesus Christ and believing in His blood. Because what did His blood do? Forgave us of all our sins and it made us righteous. Hallelujah. So what is our part in the new covenant of grace and peace? Now, who's the best person to ask? Paul. And what would we do if we had like an ancient documentation or we had like a recording of exactly what Paul preached when he talked about the gospel? We would be like, wow, we need to listen to this, study this, and this is what we're going to believe. And actually we have that. In Acts 13, we've got word for word a sermon what Paul preached. And he starts off by going through the history of Israel. But then when he comes to David, he mentions Jesus. And then in Acts 13 verse 38, he says, Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man Jesus is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. So that's number one, the forgiveness of sins. And by him everyone who believes is declared righteous, justified, just as if you never sinned, from all things from which you could not be declared righteous, justified, by the law of Moses. The Young's literal says, everyone who is believing is declared righteous. Now what are we believing? You must be believing. Your, all your believing must be focused on, I am forgiven of all my sins and I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Verse 40 then says, Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe. Though one were to declare it to you. So it's all about believing. We must be believing. Our part in the new covenant of grace is to simply believe. And what should we believe? We are to believe in Jesus. Yeah. Hey? We are to believe in Jesus. Because God is no longer looking at the sinner. He's no longer looking at you in your flesh. He is looking at the Son of Man, His Son. He's focused on Jesus and what Jesus did. Hallelujah. So it's all about Jesus. It's no longer about the sinner, but the focus is on the Savior. Hallelujah. And, what, and this amazing gift that God has given us, the faith, the faith is a gift, the grace is a gift, and what do you do with a gift? You receive it. Like, Alsika, can you please come up here? Like, if Alsika is going to give me 
this hundred rand. So this is the faith. You would, no, no, no. Okay, what must I do to earn that? Hey? Must I keep a certain day, a feast day? Oh, must I eat a certain way? Oh, must I pray first for 20 hours a day? Oh, no, must I go read my Bible for, before you give that to me? Okay, uh, what, uh, okay, no, wait, I need to do something. What must I do? <laughs> How do we do this? We use our mouths. Do so you believe in your heart? Hey, Bible says you must believe in your heart and then the word is in your mouth. Then you say, thank you. I am forgiven and I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Asuka. Praise the Lord. So only believing. Another way you can remember it is believing is receiving. When you believe, it's all about receiving. Okay. So if I say, like if I said now, what must I do? What is that? That's self-righteousness. Okay. So Acts 3 verse 16 again. The faith of His name. The faith that is through Him. And you might ask lots of people on the streets, do you believe in Jesus? They'll say, yes, I believe in Jesus. But what do they believe? They might believe Jesus is a historical figure. They might believe he was a good man, or he was a prophet, or he was a rabbi, or he was a moral philosopher, or whatever. But all those things will not save him. You must believe that Jesus, firstly, that he's the Savior, and you must believe that he's the Son of God, but that he's your personal Lord and Savior. That's what, number one, you must believe that He's your personal Lord and Savior. Then you must believe He's the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the only way to salvation. And then when you believe He's the only way to salvation, you receive the gift of eternal life. And then you must believe that Jesus took all the sins, past, present, and future sins. And you might say, how can He take future sins? You must believe He took future sins, but because He's not going to die again, and He died 2,000 years ago. So all the sins are anyway future. So He took all the sins, like Colossians says, past, present, and future sins. He took, He was punished for those sins. And now He will not remember those sins anymore. That's where Hebrews 8 verse 12 comes in. And this is what the new covenant of grace is based on. And this is what God wants you to believe. He wants you to believe Hebrews 8 verse 12 with all your heart. And when He says this, He means every word. Because another way you can explain faith is, faith is believing that God cannot lie. Eh? When you say something, you need to have a good opinion of God. You need to have a good opinion that, of God's love for you. Hallelujah. And what does Hebrews 8 verse 12 say? I will be merciful to the unrighteousness. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Let's say it together. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So when God says no more, does it mean He reminds you of your sins? Or He reminds you that you did this wrong or you did that? No, He remembers it no more. Hallelujah. The only person who remembers it is you, your wife, and maybe the devil or someone else. (laughs) So you see, in the new covenant, there's nothing for you to do. Only believing. Only receiving. Hallelujah. So where does works come in? Works happen because you are believing. Okay? When you believe right, you will live right. When you are believing, then you will have the accompanying action. Hallelujah. Like if I told you guys this building is on fire, if you believe me, they will, something will happen. You will either faint or you will scream or you will run, jump through the window or you will grab someone and take them out. So there will be something that happens. So when you believe with all your heart that you are forgiven and that you have a righteousness of God in Christ, there will be an action. But the action doesn't produce, the, produce it. The f- believing produced the action. You see So to the outside, it might look the same. But from God's perspective, it makes all the difference for motive. Okay, so what are the two things you must believe? You're your part in the new covenant of God's grace. And what's grace? Unmerited favor is to believe, number one, that you are completely forgiven of all your sins, that Jesus' blood cleanses you from all your unrighteousness and lawlessness. 
Romans 3 verse 25 says, whom God did set forth as a mercy seat. And like we know, what's the mercy seat? It's on top of the Ark of the Covenant. So all the lawlessness, all the rebellion is in the Ark, and then on top of the Ark is the mercy seat where the blood is applied. So, and then through the faith in His blood. So like we just saw, we're believing in, two, we're believing in the faith of Jesus' name, and we're believing in the faith in His blood. The faith in His blood. To demonstrate His righteousness. In His forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Okay. So the faith in His blood. The New Covenant's emphasis is to believe that you are forgiven of every sin and that God has erased them from His memory. So what's the second one? So the first one, forgiveness. The second one, that in God's eyes today, you are made perfectly righteous by Jesus' finished work. Romans 3 verse 22 says, And the righteousness of God is through the faith of Jesus Christ to all and upon all those believing. For there is no difference. Romans 3 verse 26 says, For the demonstrating of God's righteousness in the present time. I think demonstrate. How does God demonstrate that He is righteous? Hey? How does God demonstrate that He, God, is righteous? And then He says, For because God being righteous and declaring Him, so you and me, righteous, who is of the faith of Jesus. So when you are believing in the faith of Jesus, in the gospel, God is righteous to declare you righteous. Hey? The New King James says, God is just in declaring you just. Because you are believing. Galatians 2 verse 16 says, Knowing that a man is not declared righteous by works of the law, but through the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be declared righteous by the faith of Christ. So notice, we believe in Christ Jesus, then we are declared righteous by the faith of Christ. So it's not even your faith that makes you righteous, it's you believing in the faith of Jesus Christ that declares you righteous. And not by works of law. For, the works, for by works of law, no flesh shall be declared righteous. So again, as soon as you are believing in what you are doing, you, will, you are not declared righteous. You must be believing in the faith of Jesus, in the gospel that declares you righteous. Hallelujah. Philippians 3 verse 9 says, Not having my righteousness, that self-righteousness, which is of law, but that which is through faith of Christ. The righteousness that is of God by the faith. The righteousness of God that is by the gospel. Hallelujah. So the righteousness of God is through the faith of Jesus Christ. So if you do not believe this, what's going to happen? It's going to be difficult for you to depend completely on God. Because if you're depending on what you must do, what happens? You're not depending on what God has done. So it's going to be difficult for you to depend on what God has done for you. And then you're not going to receive or inherit all of those benefits of salvation, what we mentioned in the beginning. You're not going to be receiving, like we said, the, the deliverance, the healing, the, provision, uh, the preservation, the rejuvenation, the protection, the safety, the provision, the prosperity, the wholeness, the welfare. So we must believe, only believe. Hallelujah. So practically, how would you see this? Practically, you must make a decision that you're not going to be dispersing your belief for all these other things. You must focus your belief on the faith. So let's say you're a businessman and you're going to phone a client and you don't know, you, you, uh, you think it's you, you're thinking it's going to go bad, you're nervous or whatever, anxious. Don't go and start saying, Lord, please help me with this, this. First, focus your believing on the faith. Say, thank you, Lord, I am forgiven of all my sins. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Then you say, thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. 
Thank you, Lord, for your success. And then you phone the person. So what am I saying? You're putting the emphasis on the faith. You're putting the emphasis on the faith. And the same with when it comes to healing, when it comes to provision. You need to put the emphasis where God puts the emphasis first. Then the other one comes. So let's take a look at healing now. So 1 Peter 2 verse 24. So we don't want to disperse our believing all over the place. We need to focus our believing on the faith of Jesus. Hallelujah. And what is the faith of Jesus, Elsika? Forgiven and righteous. Well done. Forgiven and righteous. And why again is it important? Galatians 2 verse 20 says, In the faith I live. In the faith I live. So you can say, because of the faith I live. Because of the faith I live. It's not because of me doing this or having done all these things. No, it's because of the faith that I live. So 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, Who himself, Jesus himself, bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That to the sins having died. That's the first one, forgiveness of sins. And actually, it's, a, it's even bigger than that because we, we commit lots of individual sins, but Jesus says it to the sins having died. Because Romans 4 says God does not impute sins to you. He doesn't impute sins to you because He's forgiven you of all your sins. Having, so, to the sins having died. Then, to the righteousness I live. To the exact... To the righteousness we may live. Now here, it's important to know what the action is or what's the form of the word. To the righteousness we may live. This live is in the active form. Active form. Now, Elsika, uh, let me first read. And to by whose stripes you were yield. Now the yield there is in the passive form. Now, some of us might not know what active form and passive form is. Let me get Elsika to come and help us here. Come, Elsika. Okay, so actively, Samuel kisses Elsika. <laughs> Active form. But Elsika was kissed by Samuel, so it was passive form for her. She kissed me back, then it's active form again. Okay, or Elsika hugged Samuel. Actively, she hugged me. Passively, I received the hug. Are you guys following? You can put it with anything. Like Elsika hits Samuel. Dush. So she is hitting me. I am being hit. So actively she's hitting me. Passively I am being hit. You guys following? So this is important. So the same way she says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's active. Passively by whose stripes she was healed. Are you guys following? So God puts the emphasis, you put all your believing in, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Then, you just receive, you, you don't even put actively your faith, by His stripes you are healed. Passively. It's being done to her. It's being done to her. You understand? Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Asuka. So, by whose stripes you were healed is passive. So first righteousness, then yield. So actively believe that you are righteous. The emphasis is on to righteousness I live. Okay? Let's say that together. To the sins having died. Say that. To the sins having died. To the righteousness I live. I live. Hallelujah. Another example of this can be James 5 verse 14. It says, Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in the faith. The faith is there. The Afrikaans gets it right here. It says, the faith. The prayer of the faith will heal the sick. And again, also, Many times we want the manifestation straight away, but yeah, it's future active. You will see the healing. Eh? Future active. And the Lord will make you well. Future active. 
So you actively say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. So as a righteous believer, then I pray for the sick. Then the Lord is actively healing the person. You guys following? So you're not actively healing the person. You believing actively that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. The Lord is actively healing the person. Then it says, And the Lord will make you well. Say, the Lord will make you well. Future active. So He will make you well. But it's the Lord doing the active form. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Future passive. So they're already forgiven. Like we just said, you're dead to sin. If you're dead, you're dead. Eh? Verse 16, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So the emphasis again is on believing the faith, which is believing that you are forgiven and righteous. So do not swap the passive and the actives. Eh? Do not swap, swap the actives and the passives. You must actively believe what God wants you to believe and then passively the benefits of salvation will follow. Hallelujah. Another example can be provision. In the, let's use the same verse. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 To the righteousness we may live actively. Then verse 25 says For you were like sheep going astray but you have turned back now to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So, are we turning back to the shepherd actively? No. The shepherd is turning us back. So you actively believe, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, then the shepherd puts you on his shoulders like Luke 15, and he provides for you. Because here, yeah, turn back is passive. So it's being done to you. Because the sheep, when the sheep ran away in Luke 15... What did the sheep do when the shepherd found the sheep? Did the sheep say, okay, no, I'll turn back, I'll come back? No, the shepherd took the sheep and put it on his shoulders, and then he took the sheep back. So that's repentance, is actively believing that you have a righteousness of God in Christ. Then the shepherd turns you back. Hallelujah. And what do we know? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. It's provision. So first righteousness, then the shepherd of your life, the provision flows. Hallelujah. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So then the faith is by a report, and the report through a saying of God. And this report must be a good report. And what's the good report? The good news, that you are righteous. So the more you hear teachings that you have a righteousness of God in Christ, that you are forgiven of all your sins, the more you have the faith. Or you are receiving the faith. Hallelujah. And like we know, when you believe right, you will live right. In the faith I live. Romans 1 verse 17 says, The righteous shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Jesus says in Luke 18 verse 8, But the Son of Man, having come, shall he find the faith upon the earth? Shall you find the faith upon the earth? So we need to continue in the faith. We need to be contending earnestly for the faith. Acts 16 verse 5 says, Then indeed the churches, the assemblies, were established in the faith and were abounding in number every day. So when the churches are more and more established in the faith, what does it say? They abound. And then Isaiah 54 verse 14 says, In righteousness you shall be established. And you shall not fear, you shall not be oppressed, you shall not have terror. Hallelujah. In righteousness you shall be established. Say established. established. So we need to be established in, I'm forgiven and I'm righteous. All your believing must be to that. That's, you must just believe for that. Hallelujah. Romans 10 verse 8 says, because you might say, how do I get established? How do I... Do this believing. The Bible says when you believe, you must say it. You mustn't just believe it in your heart. You must speak it. It says in Romans 10 verse 5, What does it say? Nigh thee is the saying. And the saying there is important because it's rhema. So it is the saying. You're saying it, rhema. 
So naivi is verema in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is verema, the saying of the faith that we preach. So what does it say? We are hearing the saying, hearing the preaching of righteousness by faith, but then we are saying. Because when we hear the saying, we believe it. When we hear the saying, when we hear the preaching of the faith, the gospel, then we believe it and then we say it. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. It says, And having the same spirit of the faith, the same spirit of the gospel, according to that which has been written, I believed, therefore I spoke, I speak. We also do believe, therefore also do we speak. So when the faith, when you hear the faith, like you're hearing now, you hear it, then you believe it in your heart, then you must say it, you must speak it. And we gave an example. If you're feeling sick, you, say, you first say, Thank you, Lord, that I'm forgiven of all my sins. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. By your stripes I was healed. Hallelujah. And just using another verse, Matthew 6. Matthew 6 says, Seek first righteousness, then all these things shall be added to you. And what's all those things? Even healing and provision. So seek first righteousness. Thank you, Lord. But I am forgiven of all my sins. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. By your stripes I was healed. Thank you, Lord. I am forgiven. I am righteous. You are my shepherd. I shall not lack. Hallelujah. And you can even ask Asuka. I went into the literal translation. I counted all the faiths. Hey? I went and counted all the faiths. And the faith appears 80 times in the Bible. All the times in the New Testament. Okay? So, the faith appears 80 times in the Bible, in the New Testament. And why is that important? Because what is 80? 80 is pay. And what is pay? Pay is speaking, mouth. So, the faith, you must speak. You must speak for faith. You must speak for gospel. Hallelujah. Faith, the faith is voice activated. It's voice activated. So, when you hear the faith, you believe the faith. And then you must speak for faith. Hallelujah. And what is the faith? I am forgiven and righteous. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And what's also interesting is that we are in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew calendar, in the Jewish calendar, we are in the 80th decade. Hey? We are in the 80th decade. So God is telling us, speak. Speak for faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. You guys can... Pray this with me. Because what did we just say? The faith must speak. So you can speak this with me. Let us pray together. Abba Father, I thank you that all my sins, past, present, and future, have been wiped out by the blood of Jesus. You will by no means remember them. I believe in the faith of Jesus' name. I believe in Jesus' blood. I am made forever righteous through Jesus' blood. And I expect to see all the benefits that my salvation entails. Deliverance, healing, health, preservation, rejuvenation, safety, protection, prosperity, provision, general welfare, and wholeness. I receive your goodness, your blessings, your unmerited favor and your good success for every area of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. So we must contend earnestly for the faith. Contend earnestly for the faith. So if someone says something that they're voting for this person or doing this, you can give your opinion, but don't fight about it. But when it comes to the gospel, you fight for the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. You fight for the gospel. If someone says, no, we don't eat pork or whatever, you say, you, can, you don't have to eat it, whatever. But you fight for the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can name anything. You can name anything. Don't fight for those things. Fight for the gospel. The same way people get worried about all these things. The Bible says... Don't let your heart be troubled. Hey? So you must have no worries. The same way you mustn't be fighting for lots of things. You can give your opinion. 
And you can tell, but don't get in arguments, in striving. But when you strive, strive and fight for, I am forgiven and I am righteous by Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Enjoy your week.